you, but I sometimes say something like this. If anybody thinks that I get boring and I'm a boring um, visiting uh, missionary, just raise your hand. Raise your hand. Well, if you're raising your hand to say hallelujah, you know, well, that's different. But if you think I'm boring, raise your hand and I'll talk louder and faster. Okay? So that you'll, you'll know that I'm anointed. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Okay, here we go. And we, anybody can tell me where this scripture is found? Um, just shout it out. And we know that all things, thank you, sister. Thank you, sister. My younger sister, no doubt. Amen. We know, how old are you? you can return to your age today? Are you older than me? Are you older than me? <laughs> well, I may be older than I look, you know. I'm 74. You got me beat? Yes, I'll be now in June. Oh, no. Every sin, the mistakes of life, 
what people have done to you, what you have done to other people, the whole thing falls under this category of all things. All of it. No exceptions. Oh, well, Pastor Roy, you don't know what I've done. You don't know where I've been. You don't know what happened to me. You don't know what they did to me. Oh, cut it out. It's excuses. It's an arm's length of them excuses. Cut it out. Our God is greater than what people have done. God never gave people the authority to ruin your life. God never gave people the authority to change his plan for your life. God didn't do it. If you let him, that's another thing. But God still works all things. And the next key word is together. I think I told you, but it bears repetition, that I happen to be the world's greatest and most modest. Crepe maker. Nobody makes crepes better than me, except of course my sister. But she got the recipe. <laughs> no, and don't. I got it from my mother, my Swedish mother. Okay, now here's what you gotta do. Would anybody here for supper like a bowl of flour? <laughs> Not really. You know, you're such a winner, sister. You, you're such a winner, you know? I saw you go up on a platform, you go down there, you get up there and you do it anyway. You do it anyway. You may need that stuff, but you do it anyway. You move ahead. You're an inspiration. Thank God. And you know, I'm talking about you. This sermon, I'm talking about you. together and you whip it until you got a batter. Then you got something together. God works all things together. You whip that up into a batter and what you do then is that you have a nice hot skillet. Oh yeah. Lord, where are you? Lord, I feel all upside down, turned around. My life is in upheaval. It's getting all mixed up and I don't know what's happening. And Lord, now I'm starting to feel the heat. The heat is coming. Lord, where are you? I'm praying. Lord, Lord God, hello, hello. Yes, where are you? I'm, I'm here. You remember me? You forget me. I'm here, Lord. You need a nice hot skill. And you pour this all things together on that skillet and you Move the skillet around so the juice uh, you know, goes all around in the corner of the edge of the skillet, you know? And then, then you wait until the one side is dry. I feel dry, Lord. I don't feel your spirit, Lord. Oh, God. And then when you think it's done, you flip it over. You ever been there? You ever done that? I believe that God put this message on my heart. <laughs> During the break between the two services, I didn't I'm preaching the same ser ser sermon I did. The first, it was good, I think. But it, the, this is better because it's what God put in my heart. And I had it in my heart, and you know, my wife comes into the uh, pastor's office where I was hiding out, and my wife says, you know, I think you should preach about all things. I said, you're right. I <laughs> Oh, I'm preaching to somebody that's here tonight, this morning, wherever we are. I'm here and I'm preaching to you. 
I'm not preaching for the people out there. They can't hear me, but you can hear me. And I'm God's representative here this morning. And I'm here to bring you a message from the throne of God and from the word of God. And that is that God works all things together. And here it comes. Here's a good son. He's working it together for good. Amen. I told you my life fell apart in 2001. I felt like a dish rag discarded in the corner. I felt I never will preach again. And I really didn't deserve to preach again. And I didn't want to. My emotions were devastated. I would struggle with depression. I told you that, didn't I? Yeah. No words could ever describe what it was like. But anyway, and you know, God worked it all together for good. And you see the pictures about Romania. I never dreamed that we would be there doing what we're doing today. Not in the fondest dream of my imagination. But God did it. And we're not talking about Roy this morning. We're talking about the God who raises the dead and causes those things that be not as though they were. And that same God is here this morning and he will do for you what he has done for thousands and thousands and thousands and untold millions of people. Hallelujah. He doesn't do it for everyone. The next word is for those who love God. It's a little exclusive. He doesn't do it for everybody. He does it for those who love God. Well, I was at the church in Kingdom Life a couple weeks ago. I was the preacher of the morning, and I sat there, and the musicians were gone, and they were having such a good time. And, you know, I was sitting on the front row ready to preach. And, you know, I realized that. My love is so imperfect. My love is so imperfect. But then it came to me, you know, David was a man of God's own heart, and he was a screw-up. He was a screw-up. But God looked at his heart, and then I got hope. I said, Lord, I want to love you. I want to love you. That's my heart. I have no other desire in the world. I don't want money or fame or I have no desire for any of that. You know, I just want to be in his presence to love him and to serve him in any way that he chooses. And so, so you folks, an indication that you love God is that you're here this morning. Unless somebody dragged you. <laughs> but you guess, we, who can love God perfectly? Well, we love him to the best of our ability. Amen. We love him. And the second part is, how are we doing, Pastor Rick? And was, yes, we do love him. Pastor Rick, do I love God? Yes, you do. Why? Because you're here. You're listening. The other one is that you're called according to his purpose. And I would like to announce, I have a... I, I have a wanted, not from the New York Times, but I have a wanted from the, the Book of Books. And that wanted says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renew, renew, renewing of your screwed up mind. <laughs> That's looking for money and fame and fortune and stuff. You need to get a renewed mind that that stuff will just rest and disappear. And when you get a transformed, renewed mind by the Spirit of God, you think differently, you believe differently, you serve differently, you live differently, you choose different friends. He said to, in Romania, I don't do that here in the United States because we're too smart. They say in Romania, when a young lady, you know, is interested in the guy who isn't saved, hoping that after she marries him, he'll get saved. I give her a word of advice, and I can only sing a word of advice. Are you ready? 
I saw him high. I saw him lifted up. The train filling the temple. This train is filling the temple here this morning. Can you sense his presence? Can you know that he is here? He is working. He is speaking. He is pleading. I beseech you, brother, don't waste the one life you have. Don't let it go to nothing. Let it count for eternity. Uh, and I saw the Lord. I saw him high, lifted up. The train filled the temple. And I saw the angels with the coals of fire. What were they for? They were for the forgiveness of sin. You can leave this morning knowing you're right with God. Your past is forgiven. It's purged with a call from off the altar. It exists no more against you. You are free. You are whole again. And then that call touched his lips. The things that he had said spoke of against God, against others, against himself. And most of our bad language is against ourselves. I can't, I'm not good enough. Oh, cut it out. Those who depend on you. Because of the God in whom you believe. And when he had gone through that process, it was time for God to issue his want and his call. Who will go for us? Whom can I send? And that Spirit of God is working here this morning. And that same question that he asked Isaiah hundreds of years ago, he's asking for this generation, this people of God, this morning here in Ashland. Does God know we're here? Yes, he does. How do I know that? Because he is here present with us. And he is speaking. He is speaking to our hearts. Have you heard his voice? Not my voice. Have you heard his voice? Maybe writing on my voice. And he's saying the same thing. Whom can I send? Who will go? And I say in the power and the majesty of that moment, I can see him lift one hand and said, Here am I, Lord. And then he lifted the other one and he said, Lord, send me. Is there anyone here? Oh, I know you're here. Is there anyone here with me can say, Here am I, Lord? Can you lift your hand with me and say, Here am I? I see you way in the back. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my. Can you lift the other one and say, Send me, Lord? Send me. Doesn't have to be Romania. Send me. Oh, follow those hands and stay here. Follow those hands and stay here. And if you didn't raise your hand and you want to stay here, we stand up anyway. Stand up anyway. Oh, 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 oh. Thank <laughs> you.